American Nightmare is one of those shows, docu-series that you'd watch and go like, how is this even possible? How can authorities in a first world country be this careless? So what are we talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about a docu series on Netflix. It's called American Nightmare. It came out this particular year. But the events happened back in 2015. And before the events that took place, there was a movie that was released, Gone Girl, which was a very good example of art imitating life or vice versa. So what what is this show about? Uh, American Nightmare follows Denise Haskins after her audit. You know, she was kidnapped terrible things happened to her. Her boyfriend was also not kidnapped, but he had to go to report that her girl, uh, that the girlfriend was missing. And the cops did not believe him. They, they, it's actually frustrating to watch the first episode when he's trying to describe this to the cops and the cops are just taking it like it's just another, you, you know, light matter, you know. Anyway, as I said, the story follows Denise Hastings. Terrible things happened to her. Uh, she's abducted. There's a home invasion. There's a home invasion. She's uh, abducted, and then the boyfriend is drugged. And then when he comes to, he goes to the court's reports. And then a few days later, Denise comes back. So when she comes back, the media and the police guess what? They call her the real life Gone Girl. Why? Gone Girl came out a year before 2014. Uh, if you remember Gone Girl, Raymond Pikes and Ben Affleck. You know, same, almost same premise, whereby it's a home invasion, the, uh, the girlfriend goes missing, and then she comes back. Almost. Actually, it's art imitating life or vice versa. But this time, it was, it, it was actually happening in real life. It was not a work of fiction. It was not directed by David Fincher. And yes, I do see where the cops might have seen a similarity, might have been suspicious, but it was just amazing that this is the authorities. They're supposed to take it up to their hands. And, and big up to the lady cop who actually comes out uh, in the end and actually makes an effort to investigate and get to the bottom of it and actually solve the problem. All these other policemen had just assumed that she was just trying to get attention. She was just playing gone gun. So let's just get into the show the review. Let's look at the show from a very you know, logical point of view. Um, the goods and the bad. So we'll start with the goods. Number one, the, 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 the sound design and the sound effect for me was very effective. It sets itself apart from all those other documentaries in that there is a certain, it, it has a certain unique sound to it that actually you know, captures the tone of each episode because the episodes are different. You know, the first episode follows uh, Aaron, the second ep episode follows Denise, and the third episode now follows the investigation as, as it comes to a close. It, for, it now closes the case. And so the sound design captures the events or the tone of each episode very well. Episode two is hard to watch. Yeah, for me it was very difficult to watch because it focuses on Denise and it goes out deep into what happened to her. And for me it was difficult. So the sound design, especially when they start talking about the kidnapper's uh, choice of music, I thought that was pretty effective in giving us an idea of what actually happened. Now, going uh, going into convincing us about what was happening, I liked how they used the reenactments because there are clips that are reenacted within the docu series, but they are edited into, uh, they, they, are, they are blended together with the real life events, and they are blended together so well with the interviews and the the the, the, uh, the CCTV cameras. Everything is blended so well that you cannot tell where one begins and the other one ends. Yes, the interviews, you know that they are interviews, but outside that, the reenactments plus the, the, the CCTV clips, they are blended in so well that they help us get a clear picture of actually what happened. So that was pretty cool. And it goes now into editing because it's edited very, very well. It's very well paced. It moves very quickly. Yeah, I didn't feel like I... You know, there are some docu-series that you watch and go like, oh my goodness, this was a very long documentary. This felt shorter because it's actually very well edited. It's very well paced. Um, and as I said, very fantastic blending of fiction and the real. Not fiction as in, you, you know, the reenactments and the CCTV footages. So that was pretty cool. Now, going back into all of that, it's just how the show in general was structured. It's very, very well structured, and I think this goes 
uh, to the directors, which is Benedict Higgins and Felicity Morris. Felicity, Felicity Morris did a show. I think it's uh, the Tinder something. Uh, the, the Tinder documentarist on Netflix. I think she's also the one who did that. So you find that this is far more well structured than that, but it's 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 the kind of docu series that is hard to watch but it's entertaining at the same time. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. What was what the characters were talking about and the ordeal that they and what they had to go through was difficult to watch. But at the same time you couldn't stop watching because of just how the pacing worked with just how they chose to structure everything. You know, episode one focuses, as, as I said before, episode one is Aaron, so you get to see everything from his point of view, what he had to go through. Episode two now, the most difficult episode to watch. Then episode three now feels more like, you know, a wrap up, a very good wrap up of the previous two uh, episodes. So that was a very, that, that was, that worked well in creating an entertaining show while still maintaining the heavy tone of what we are seeing. Um, apart from that, what else there? Like the, the general quality of the reenactment and the interviews is really, really good. The cinematography, I'm talking, there are some shots that are just, there are some shots that just linger, but you can actually get an idea of what's going through the character. And it's able to capture the emotion that they intended to actually show us. So that's the good, the bad, um, I, I, episode three, there's something they tried to do, and I was like, come on, guys, you are going on so well, stop doing this. That believe women. I understand the show. The police should have believed her. The police should have believed Aaron. It, it's very important, but they kept, you know, honing in the idea of believe women. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm for that. Believe women. Actually, believe everyone, not just women. But, as you believe those people are supposed to do an in-depth investigation into what is happening. Not necessarily believe, but step back, look at everything from a very logical point of view, and then investigate deeply. Not just say, I believe you. Go like, okay, I understand, I understand, I understand. Now let's look at everything from the ground up. Not just assuming that because this happened, oh, we can connect it to a film. Not saying that the police should have immediately believed them. I believe the police should have immediately gone into action and started to investigate. You know, go get the evidence, try to go around the country, you know, put out whatever the police put out in order to try to find out the truth. That is important. In terms of believing women, uh, as I say, the, the world is kind of capitalistic. And let's, let's be honest to ourselves. There, the, okay, let me just put it this way. Think of uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I mean, people believed her. Someone lost his career. Someone had a miserable time because we chose to believe one particular group. And when the truth came out, what happened? Nobody did anything. Everybody suddenly, oh man, uh, you know, uh, let's pretend that that did not happen. So it's good to believe people. It's good to believe women. But it's also important to investigate and to get to the bottom of what is being presented, not just assume. I hope I'm making it clear. So for me, that that, that is the one moment that I went like, ah, now you're trying to push a message, you're trying to push an agenda. I think you are very well balanced. I felt you, I understood, I saw where you are going with this. I empathize, but that's when you feel like the documentary now uh, becomes a bit creative. And the, uh, the, 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 you feel the director trying to put their own agenda within the show, trying to put to push a certain subject. And they were going on very well. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I think I've explained myself. So apart from that, that's what I thought of American Nightmare. It's a very, very good show. It's worth your time. If I, if I was to rate this, I'll give this a four. Yeah, I'll give this a solid four. It's, 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 it's strangely entertaining and tragic at the same time. Um, I, man, it's a good thing that they sued those guys. It's, I wish I knew what happened to the po po policemen. It, Imagine we are shown at the end. I think the one of the most tragic moments is when we are shown uh, one of the policemen who was handling the case won the best an award for the uh, I think it's the best the cop of the year or something 
and I believe it has to do with solving that solve, solving that particular problem. and I was like no he doesn't deserve that you know wh- what the hell was that I think he should have been humiliated because whatever happened to Denise and Aaron was terrible and it was handly, handled poorly and I'm glad that we have a documentary like this to actually just remind us that yes the police is out there to protect us but they are also human and they are you know they're capable of making stupid mistakes so basically that's it the the docu series is on netflix i don't know if you've seen it what you think what you thought about the show did you like it did you not like it was it traumatizing did you find it hard to watch let me know the comment section is all for that and remember to always watch what you enjoy and enjoy what you watch thanks for watching please subscribe and i shall see you on the other review the next one thanks for watching